All right, y'all. So this is crazy. The 4B movement. Um, it's a feminist movement that started started in South Korea where women are legit refusing to go out with men and to date them, to marry them, to have kids with them. Basically, they are like incels, but they're women. And obviously, you know, women, we can't really be incels, but they are being voluntary incels um, and choosing to put themselves um, in that path because they're fed up with men's treatment of them and they don't no longer want to uh no longer want to put up with it and for me you know i'm a christian i'm a i'm a woman of god i would like to say and i am completely against modern feminism but even me as someone who has read my bible and been close to jesus i definitely understand where these girls are coming from i sympathize i have compassion for them because um you get sick out you get sick and tired out here of the way that men are acting it's like there's something in the food or something in the water and i believe that social media has a big um part of it of of making men and women hate each other so many gender wars going on that really brings no happiness to anybody it actually if anything brings more depression and sadness because um if you guys don't know this generation has actually been reported to be the most loneliest generation of our time suicide rates are increasing less people are getting married there's more divorce rates hookup culture is skyrocketing and people because of that are lonelier than ever before and that's with both men and women so it's very sad you know that we chose to kind of abandon um uh, we chose to abandon god's way of marriage um for both husband and woman and their roles and did things our own way and that's why movements like this the 4b movement is growing um so i'm gonna play this clip um of exactly what it is and why it started and y'all someone needs to make a movie out of this like someone needs to make an extreme movie about the the movement and make it fiction because obviously if it's fiction it's so much more cool but because this is this is like a dystopian society coming to life and it's honestly there's so many cool pointers that you can make from it honestly that's a good movie idea i'm gonna write notes and probably make something out of this one day but yeah this is um the clips of what's going on it's so refreshing to see women all around the globe collectively wake up and give up trying to teach men basic human consideration, basic human decency. It is so refreshing to see women own their power as the limiting factor to the continuation of our species. How we can end lineages by opting out. How we can literally end ethnicities by opting out. How women's disappearance from private life can be a catalyst for change. For far too long, we have made ourselves too available too agreeable, too accommodating, too good. And men, the automatic drainers of feminine energy, they neglected, mistreated, drained, and discarded us. And we're no longer putting up with it. Have you guys heard of the 4B movement in South Korea? The women of South Korea's 4B movement aren't fighting the patriarchy. They're leaving it behind entirely. There's been a small but growing women's movement in South Korea in response to widespread cases of femicide, revenge, and dating violence, and a surge in spy cam crimes overwhelmingly committed by... You already knew. And the fact that all of these crimes mostly resulted in slaps on the wrist like fines and suspended jail sentences if they were prosecuted at all. And so protesters in South Korea went ham. And several women's movements were created in response like the 4B movement. 4B is shorthand. Bihan is the refusal of a heterosexual marriage. Bichul Sun is the refusal of childbirth. B on Yang, damn my Korean is good, is saying no to dating. And B sexu is the rejection of heterosexual relationships. Many in the 4B movement believe this is the only path with which Korean women today can live autonomously. In their view, Korean men are essentially beyond redemption. Where have I heard that before? And Korean culture on a whole is hopelessly patriarchal and often downright misogynistic. While 4B adherents may hope to change society, 
They are not trying to change the men whom they view as their oppressor. That's why I love this movement. Because they said, you know what? We sick and tired of trying to talk to y'all and get y'all to wake up and get on the right side of history. So you know what? We just not gonna fuck with y'all. I'm so glad you asked. The 4B movement is a movement in South Korea right now where the misogyny and sexism is so bad that South Korean women have decided to opt out of dealing with men entirely. That is not a joke. That is not an exaggeration. They are not dating men. They are not marrying men. They are not having children with men. They're not even sleeping with men anymore. And it's called the 4B movement because the Korean words for those four things all start with the letter B. This kind of first started happening around 2016 when Kim Ji Young, born 1982, a novel came out. And it is a fictional book about a Korean every woman and all of the misogyny and sexism that she's experienced from literally being a child all the way to her being an adult suffering with postpartum depression after having her child. Now, this book became a runaway bestseller among South Korean women because they were like, she's just like me for real. And that's kind of when it started cooking, right? Now, the movement officially got its name in 2019, and it's just been going ever since. It's so successful, in fact, that now South Korea has one of the lowest birth rates in the world. The number of deaths in South Korea outnumber the number of births in South Korea. And it's hilarious because all the men and the government are like, oh my God, what do we do? We, they, they don't want to like talk to us. They don't want to date us. They don't. What do we do? Like everything's in shambles. We don't know what to do. When South Korean women have been very clear from day one, they're like, hey, either you get your act together or we are literally eliminating all of this like we are shutting it down so that's the 4b movement and why i'm so obsessed with it and why i think we should have the 4b movement everywhere thanks for listening bye whoa y'all um and this is this is a movement that's growing also um in all over all all different other countries not just korea um it's getting really big and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is honestly a perfect opportunity for the devil to destroy humankind because obviously the devil hates humanity and how else is he going to get rid of us by making us um, celibate, you know, by saying like you guys are not having sex, no children and women are voluntarily doing this and I'm not saying that women are completely to blame. I think men have a big, big part of this because they fail to lead women in a Christ-like way, um, the Bible constantly tells, um, it tells husbands that they have to love their wives the way that Jesus loved the church. And that is a huge, huge stake for how a husband should love his wife. But unfortunately, a lot of husbands don't do that, um, especially in Korea, um, especially I feel like in most of a Asian countries, um, because they don't have, um, they're not Christian, you know, most of them are, they believe in different religions, um, they believe like Hinduism, um, I know that they just have a bunch of um, religions that, that worship, like, it's like poly, polytheistic, like multiple gods, um, whereas compared to, like, other other spaces where they do believe in God, um, it's different. You know, women are treated differently. I'm not saying all the time, but I feel like in my household, my dad truly is a man of God, and because of that, he treats my mom with so much love and patience, and we don't demonize um, a, ma a manly role. We don't demonize masculinity, whereas places like um places that are like in korea or different countries where men are treated treat women like objects it's completely different so i sympathize with these women i understand where they're coming from because even there have been times where um i feel like a, it sucks because in california men are becoming less and less like men as the time passes and it really affects us women because especially for the ones like me that want to get married and have children it's hard to find a decent guy because most guys just want to mess around they don't want to be men they don't want to better themselves they don't want to have self-discipline they don't want to wait till marriage you know and even christian even when i've met guys in the christian spaces they have a lot of problems they're dealing with and that's because it's been um this breakdown of masculinity going on in california and our societies and this huge uprise of feminism that strengthens women but weakens the men and we need a, in a society um in a society where we want to both be strong we need to strengthen men just as much as we strengthen women. I have nothing, there's nothing, I have nothing against woman empowerment. It just depends on how you're empowering women. And I feel like a lot of times, um, 
especially on social media we have this um where we put down men or we're like oh men are trash men ain't this and if you constantly are, are speaking that over yourself it's going to come to pass it's going to come it's going to happen and i think that's what's happening a lot all over the world where there is a rise of feminism and this breakdown of mas masculinity and that's not okay because we need to both be strong both genders need to be strong and go back to biblical principles of what it means to be a woman of god and what it means to be a man of god and that does not have to, that doesn't have to do with tyranny it doesn't have to do with control and domination it has to do with real love what does the bible say that love is and sadly in um south korea that's not happening and that's why women have taken a stance and unfortunately um the the birth rates are decreasing and that's not okay you know we don't want we don't want a extinct of a whole population because we because there was there was pride on both sides you know pride is is from the devil pride is evil and this ultimately is pride from both sides but i understand where the women are coming from because it must be so so un so sad to constantly be telling a man what you desire what you need and they don't listen so you have to go to those extreme results of being like okay well you're not going to listen that i am not going to be around you and i am not going to have children with you um but i know how tempting it is to be a feminist you guys trust me i was a feminist for years super i was so depressed when i was a feminist a modern feminist because i as a woman want to have children i want to be married um and feminism for the most part demonized that and it made me this very you know um strong i, I want to say strong because i didn't really feel like i was strong i was just faking it um because i think that you can't be strong without god and i feel like naturally when you get closer to god you kind of let go of all those principles of hating of like hating men and i'm talking about extreme modern feminism which i feel like most people are becoming um, and I was just, I just felt very lonely and sad and I didn't like it. And it was tempting to be a feminist because that's what the world was, was publishing all over, you know, TikTok, Instagram, it, it was going viral. And I also, I understood why, because I was just getting fed up with all the guys I was dating. But when I got closer to God, um, he shaped me more to be, um, a Proverbs 31 woman, which is a woman who is a hardworking woman who has her own businesses, who pays on things on her her own it even says like in the in the proverbs 31 woman um the verse that she pays a thing she paid um fields from her own earnings it talks about an independent woman but not just an independent woman that doesn't is not married and has kids but one that that uplifts her husband one that uplifts her children and that's what makes a true woman of god and that makes from what I've seen in my circle of families and friends is that women who are married to a godly man are the ones that flourish the best, are the ones that are truly the happiest and the ones that are most at peace. I've seen that with like my pastor's wife. Um, I have like multiple pastors, so all of their wives. I know it's life has not been perfect, but I see them the most, the most truly joyful. Um, whereas compared to women who have chosen to never be married, never have kids because they because they're fed up with men i see them the most the most depressed the most going through clinical depression and i've, and I've seen that from like real time in my in just my circle of friends and it's really sad that, that feminine modern feminism really impacts women to be independent and be like these men haters but it's not supposed to do that um i really do believe that in a way jesus was a feminist because he treated women as 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 equally as he treated men he didn't treat women like second class citizens. And Jesus, in a way, he was the first. Um, I don't, I don't want to say feminist because I know people have like a negative connotation to that. But he was the first one that empowered women. He was the first one that treated women with respect. We see that as a woman with the well. We see that with Mary Magdalene. We see that with the adulterous woman that came to him. Um, we see that he constantly forgave women and treated them with love and compassion and forgiveness. And that's what God wants for both society, for both men and women. He wants them to both flourish, to both have joy. 
not to be out here competing with one another. It was never supposed to be a competition. It was supposed to be two genders coming together as one and creating families and creating generations that glorified him. That was the whole reason why he created the family structure, why he created both genders. But unfortunately, you know, because there has been um, a perversion of design for both men, how they have been, they have, they were designed a certain way, but in the world has perverted them and the and vice versa with women because of the perversion of design which is fully the devil's plan it has been ruined um and now we're competing against one another and i understand the 4b movement but i don't think that it will truly it, it will it's not going to end well it's going to end with like you're losing your whole population it's not going to end well because ultimately women flourish in family environments and both both men and women do. We need each other and we're happier when we're with each other living in the way that God originally designed us to be, which is man and wife and family, you know, but yeah, this this made me sad. y'all. I'm surprised this is even happening, man. Someone needs to make a movie out of this. because This is crazy. <laughs> this is like, <laughs> man, sometimes we think that, like we think fiction is is. is never gonna come to life but most of the things that have happened that f inspires fiction come from reality and that's crazy y'all anything is possible in this world that's why first and foremost god is real he is possible even though we might think of him as like this fictional god he is real because stuff like this exists y'all but okay anyways i'm out y'all